if containerization is the default now, and it seems to be, you know, Kubernetes containerization, getting applications up in that fashion, if if it is the default, which again, it, I'm just repeating myself for the uh, second time in, in 30 seconds or so, uh, then we need different ways to orchestrate these workloads. Now, Kubernetes is great. Uh, if you don't want to fully manage Kubernetes, like control planes and worker nodes, you can use EKS, AKS, GK, etc. If you even want to go a step further uh, and not manage the control plane or the worker nodes and some of the security stuff and performance and scalability, you can use EKS automatic. You can use, or I'm sorry, EKS auto mode. You can use AKS automatic. You can use GK autopilot. There are a lot of different options. Now, one option, if you don't want to go the Kubernetes route, but you still want production level orchestration is with something like AWS ECS or Elastic Container Service, which you can see right here. So what you'll probably have to do is type in Elastic Container Service, click on that here. And then as you can see, there are a couple of options, but the first piece is to get started. And by getting started, you're going to create a cluster. So that cluster needs to be created, but it's not managed by you. Now, this is kind of the, the interesting piece here because it is an orchestration platform that's uh, not Kubernetes, but it could feel a little bit Kubernetes-ish considering we have to create a cluster, whereas like in something like AKS, uh, or I'm sorry, Azure Container Apps, you don't have to you know create a, a cluster and all that stuff. So if I click on the orange button here, give this a name, say MJL, dev ECS, right? And then we got some infrastructure options here. So we can go Fargate, which is serverless, meaning, you know, no EC2 instances running these workloads, or you can choose EC2 if you want. You can then go do some monitoring here, which this makes the most sense, Container Insights. Container Insights is actually really solid when it comes to, uh, you know, everything monitoring and observability related around containers. It's really good. Uh, but if you're using something like Datadog or, or the you know Grafana, Prometheus, Loki, Tempo stack, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, but if you're looking to do something in the AWS realm, Container Insights is actually pretty awesome, but I'll, I'll keep it off for now. Encryption, this is gonna allow us to choose the KMS keys used by tasks running in the cluster to encrypt storage. In other words, um, kind of think about it like, you know how like you can encrypt etcd, similar concept, right? And then any tagging that you want to put, you know, you can say environment dev, right? And then we click create here, and then we just wait for this cluster to bump up. All right, now that that cluster is created, notice here it says tasks, no running tasks. Now tasks are like the actual workloads that are running but if we click on the cluster here again we can see some services we can see some tasks we can see the infrastructure pieces here metrics etc now notice there is an update button if you want to update it you can based on you know when new updates come out uh, again it feels like even though ecs is supposed to be you know something around hey you don't want to do kubernetes but you still want to do orchestration but it can definitely feel a little bit Kubernetes centric uh, because you still have to do some cluster management stuff here. All right. Um, so go to tasks, you can click on new running task service. You can click on uh, running service or if services are running and then you can click on create here. All right now under this service, notice how it's going to choose the existing cluster and it should do the same thing if you do a task. Right. Yeah. So a couple of things to keep in mind, a task is like you want to perform a particular action, you know, maybe like a cron job or something, whereas a service is something that's long running. Right. So if I go back to services and I click create service here, we got a couple of options, capacity provider strategy, specify a launch strategy to distribute your task across one or more providers. And then you can choose the capacity here if you want to. The capacity provider, it can be Fargate or Fargate spot. The reason why is because remember, we chose the Fargate option. So if we went EC2, we would be able to do like EC2 spot instances and such, All right? 
platform version, depending on what version of Fargate you want to be on, which it usually always makes sense to go latest unless you have some edge case. Then you can choose the task definition family here. And what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to create that task definition. So if I right click that option here and open up in a new tab, I'll go ahead and I will create a task definition, right? So we can just give it a name. We'll say Nginx test infrastructure requirements, which we've already chosen architecture stuff. So like, you know, arm based x86 based CPU type and memory, right? So, you know, what type of scale your application actually needs to run and perform as expected. Uh, and then you can set up some task roles in here, placements, and then any type of fault injection. Now under the container piece here, this is where uh, you would specify what application you wanna run. So if I say Nginx, I think I can do just Nginx latest. I'm not sure if that if I have to like provide Docker Hub here. Let's uh let's see, right? We'll specify if it's a private registry, container port, you know, CPU, GPU, which is really cool. Um, you can now specify that if you. Where's the option here? I think it might be based on. Let me see. Uh, nope, not based on that. Click yes. Let me see if I can find where the GPU thing is. Uh, okay, just pause the video a second to uh, find that. And this is where it is. If you click on EC2, you can then specify GPUs here. All right. So Fargate doesn't look like Fargate supports GPUs currently. But anyway, so we go on container port, CPU stuff, memory stuff, all that stuff. <laughs> and then some environment variables here. If you need to pass anything in at runtime, logging, obviously super crucial. You're going to want to make sure that you collect those logs or export them somewhere else, right? So you can export them to Splunk, for example, and a couple of different other options. And then you got a couple of different optional pieces here. So like any thing around startup dependencies, uh, if there's a specific Docker configuration, like this is really important if, uh, you know, if you've ever created a Docker file and you do like a CMD and then you put the command there to start the actual application via its entry point, you can do that configuration there. And then resource limits, which we've already specified. Storage, obviously super important if you have something that's uh, not ephemeral, right? So you have storage that needs to get saved. This is how you do it. Right, monitoring, we already spoke about that a little bit, and tagging. And I'm gonna click create. Oh, uh, let's see. The sum of the container CPU must not exceed the task. Uh, okay, uh, let's go here, see if that works. All right, that is yelling at me. I must have put something somewhere. Let me see here. Ah, there it is. All right, so if I bump that back up to one here. I got to go down to the task CPU and bring that down to one. It's weird that they do that, but all right, there's a couple, it's like, there's a couple different places to specify almost the same thing or, or very similar configurations, but nonetheless. All right. So we come back up here. I'm going to do a refresh. Now we can see that task definition here, all right? Service name, right? So we can say Nginx test replica count two. Why not? turn on availability zone rebalancing, which is great because we're not specifying any type of like, you know, multi AZ or, uh, you know, scalability with Carpenter or like the Kubernetes cluster autoscaler or something. So it's good that that helps us out there, right? A couple of different optional pieces here. Networking is obviously going to be super crucial because you got to specify what VPC you want it to be in, what subnets. So like, you know, for example, uh, is it supposed to be a public facing application or not? If not, probably doesn't need public subnets. You can choose some security groups here and then we can click create. So let's go ahead and wait for this thing to deploy. All right. And as we can see that task was deployed, we can see the clusters here. We can see the task definitions here. And if I go to my cluster, right? Notice how I have my service here. Status is active, deployment and tasks, two out of two running, which if we click on that, we can see the containers here, which, all right, 
that worked. I wasn't hundred percent sure if it was going to work, uh, because I thought maybe I had to specify like the Docker hub URL or URI, um, but I didn't have to, so that's good. And as we can see, the tasks here are, uh, essentially the containers. Okay. So like, remember how we specified, uh, two replicas, right? Those two replicas are here. They're called tasks, but if you're coming from the world of like Kubernetes, for example, this is like having two replicas uh, or two pods deploy, deployed on a Kubernetes cluster. So we can see any type of logging that's occurring. So like how it started and then if it failed or anything, we'd see that in here as well. So all in all, it's a pretty good service if you don't want to go down the Kubernetes route. Now, and, and this is just me speculating, and I'm very curious to see what this looks like later on. But like with services like AKS Automatic, EKS Auto Mode, where it's abstracting away essentially the entire cluster for you. It's helping out with a lot of the baseline security. It's helping out a lot with performance. So like scalability, for example, uh, like with AKS Automatic Carpenter is built in. I believe it's the same thing for EKS Auto Mode as well. So it, it makes you think like if all this is abstracted away, will these services like ECS and Azure Container Apps uh, stay relevant? Who knows? I, I guess we'll see. But hopefully this was helpful. Really appreciate you watching. And feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about, you know, anything containerization.